Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everybody, and thank you very much for having us here today. It's uh, a pleasure to be here and uh, a real opportunity for us to um, spread the uh, awareness of, of sextortion. Um, from myself and Kasha, uh, we work in the Cybercrime and Harm Prevention Team in Police Scotland. Um, we're a national unit. Um, we're a very tiny unit. We are of four police officers, um, two staff, two sergeants, and an inspector. So we, we cover a whole range of things from child sexual exploitation online through to big organisations being um, hacked and threatened with, with ransomware. So um, we cover a very wide range of cyber harms um, nationally. As for today, um, we're aware that um, sextortion has um, a bigger, wider meaning for different organisations and different areas of work. However, just going to go through the kind of the sextortion kind of part from a police point of view, um, especially around kind of scams. <coughs> this works. Right. The technical hitch has already happened, so hopefully the rest of it will uh, will go smoothly. So. So, the National Crime Agency defines extortion as financially motivated sexual extortion which involves the threat of sharing sexual information, images or clips to extort money from people whether images actually exist or not. In plainer English, um, sextortion is blackmail. It is when someone threatens to send a sexual image or video of you to other people if you don't pay them or provide more sexual content. In Scotland, there is no specific crime of sextortion, and by that I mean there's, um, it's not a crime in its own right. However, we use the term sextortion as an umbrella term for a number of <coughs> legislated crimes, and they all share the commonality that uh, it involves the threat of the exposure of intimate sexual images or recordings for some sort of gain. Such as, we have the common law crime of extortion, uh, we have the Abusive Behaviour and Sexual Harm Scotland Act 2016, where there's a crime of disclosing or threatening to disclose an intimate uh, photograph or film. You've got the Sexual Offences Scotland Act, and within this year, that includes the sexual offences against children. And we've also got the Domestic Abuse Scotland Act, and that's where we look at things like coercive control. As Cash had mentioned earlier on, over the last few years, the rates of these types of crime have been growing exponentially. Any individual in Scotland can fall victim to sextortion, regardless of their age, gender, location, or socioeconomic status. The psychological and physical harms caused by sextortion are an immediate and safeguarding concern. Before we get into the main kind of bulk of, of, of the presentation, uh, we just want to kind of hear your thoughts and kind of test your knowledge on, on, on sextortion just now and what, what your kind of um, thoughts about it are. So, We've got a couple of um, statements that are going to be coming up, and I want to know if you think they are true or false. So, um, we'll call this a warm-up for you, for later. <laughs> okay, so... Um, so, sextortion only happens to people who use dating apps. What are people's thoughts? <laughs> Excellent. It, 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 there's a whole range of, of, of um, different types of, of platforms used for, um, for sextortion. So, the majority of victims of sextortion know the perpetrator. Ooh. <laughs> hands up for true. Okay, hands up for false. Okay, there's a few who haven't made up their minds, that's, that's fine. <laughs> So, in this case, it's actually false. Um, we compare things like um, child sexual exploitation. Um, often, that is actually something that they something known to the family. But actually, with extortion, online extortion, um, majority of the people uh, have got known to the victim. And last one. So. Um, We've got new stats in recently, so this slide's not been changed, but we're going to say, in the, la in the first six months of 2023, 49% of sex extortion victims were aged between 13 and 18 years old. Excellent. We should go home. Any decisions? <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Yeah? All done. So, um, there are different types of forms of extortion. Um, some are more prolific than, it, than others. So, um, we'll start off with phishing emails. Everybody knows what phishing email is, don't they? You've all received one. You know, you will have one in your junk mail that's saying it's from your bank, you need to pay this or tick this link. So, phishing emails are fake emails designed to encourage you to respond and are a common extortion technique. Uh, they claim to have access to your internet service history or devices and that they have proof that you've been visiting explicit sites. They may threaten to expose you and demand money. They may also direct you to click on a link or an attachment contained in the email. These links or attachment, attachments are likely to contain malicious software which will allow them to access your device or steal personal information. These emails are usually sent out in bulk and at random. Um, also often have spelling mistakes and things like that. So there's, there's real telltale signs. Next one is social media. I'm not going to go through this in too much detail because that will be the main bulk of our um, or presentation, but uh, it's the most prevalent form of extortion. We've also got hacked accounts and hacked devices. So if you've got intimate photos or videos online saved to the cloud or on social media accounts or to a device, they could be vulnerable to being hacked. Criminals may use uh, these images to extort money from you. Um, Being quite, um, not so much recently, but over the years we have had a lot of um, a-listers and B-listers, you know, famous people who have been exposed where their, their accounts are being hacked. So um, it, it's definitely out there. Software security is improving. However, occasionally extortion may involve malware being downloaded onto the victim's device, which can allow criminals to remotely take control of cameras and microphones, <coughs> which will allow them to monitor the victim um, without their knowledge. Non-consensual intimate image sharing. So this is sometimes referred to as revenge porn and is against the law and includes intimate images shared without consent, threats to share intimate images and images recorded without consent, also referred to as voyeurism. Non-consensual intimate image sharing usually occurs in a relationship in order to shame the victim or to control their behaviour. It does not necessarily involve the demands of the money. It can include sharing images with friends or family and is used to directly threaten a partner or ex-partner. And lastly, we've got child sexual abuse and exploitation. Sextortion also affects children and is a method, method of online grooming. Children are often approached on social media by strangers through fake profiles and by adults pretending to be much younger. The abuser will gain the child's trust through praise or flattery before asking that asking to chat privately or send a photo. Once the child shares an image or divulges personal information, the abuser will use this as leverage to coerce the child to do more usually by threat of repression. This can be highly distressing for a child who feels isolated and unable to seek help. In this case, uh, in these cases, legislation used to investigate the crimes would be sexual offences got them down. So. This is the other technical hitch today that our videos aren't working in display form. So. Hey, how are you doing? I'm Jess. I noticed that you're kind of cute. I hope this doesn't sound lame, but sometimes you just want to have some fun. Do you know what I mean? And I'd really like to have some fun with you. I could take my top off. You like that, don't you? You could take your top off. Maybe your jeans too. I'd like to watch you doing stuff while I do stuff. Except, maybe you shouldn't. Because you know what? You're being recorded. Understand? Gorgeous, isn't she? Yeah, she works for me. You're, You're being, being blackmailed. blackmailed. Your, Your contacts, contacts have been, been downloaded. downloaded. 
the film will be shared with your friends, your family, your workmates, everyone, everyone you know. know. Unless you pay. And, and if, if you, you think, think you can, can talk, talk me out, out of it, it, think again. Because for those of us pressing the buttons behind the scenes, it's just, just business. Um, so that's the reality of, of what's happening out there, uh, folks. Um, and, and this is what um, our kind of online kind of social media type of sextortion, and this is how it happens. So the MO is generally where a highly convincing fake profile is created on social media, usually that of an attractive young female. Victims are usually targeted on mainstream social media, with Instagram and Snapchat being predominant. The victim is friended by the perpetrator and a flirtatious conversation is soon initiated. The perpetrator then leads the conversation to another platform where the victim is persuaded to remove their clothing, engage in sexual act, or send explicit images and recordings of themselves to the perpetrator. On many occasions, the victim may also be secretly recorded by the perpetrator if using video chat. Images and videos obtained by the perpetrator, whether consensually or not, are then used to leverage as leverage to extort money. During the exchange, the perpetrator, perpetrator has harvested the victim's contacts, usually having targeted them through an open social media profile rather than one made private. The perpetrator will often display a screenshot of the contacts to the victim as proof that they have the ability to share the information and add to the pressure to comply. Demands are typically made for cryptocurrency payments or through bank transfers to mule or false accounts, and the purchase of online gift cards are also highly prevalent. Where payment is made, the victim is often pressured to continue to make more payments and there is no guarantee that their images will not be subsequently be shared. <coughs> Refusing to pay has, has at times resulted in images being shared, but often refusal to pay either is deter, may e either deter the perpetrator or change their threats to falsely expose them as a paedophile. It should be noted that online sexual encounters with strangers are now considered to be socially acceptable and that this is often a common behaviour amongst the victim demographic. There is some limited understanding and acceptance of the risk involved, but the perception prevails that the reward of sexual gratification outweighs the perceived risk. And this is where I think so. Yes, so as a result of the, the data that we received from the analysts, as a result of working with divisions, speaking to our stakeholders, uh, working with our partners, this is the overall picture of extortion um, in terms um, of DMO, uh, what type of um, preventative activities we should be carrying out. So the targets of financial extortion are boys and young men predominantly. Um, many criminals use a similar strategy involving Snapchat and Instagram posing an attractive female. Um, and criminals can easily create fake accounts uh, and target potential victims, which the rise of the use of AI and deepfakes is making it even easier. Uh, and we found that cyber criminals are becoming better and better at it as well. Um, the reason for for the fact that um, we don't have that that huge rate of um, I guess um, tracing the criminals is because they are usually based outside of the UK as well. However, there's a lot of work going behind the scenes between the National Crime Agency, FBI, Interpol. So it is a recognised issue uh, and things are being done um, to kind of make sure that we are much better at tracing them. Um, another one, complying with demands for money, typically leads to further demands. That is, that is a definite. And we'll come on to talking to you about um, our preventative messaging and raising awareness. Um, how we are highlighting to potential victims or victims that complying with demands will, will not make the problem go away, that reporting to the police is probably the best way forward. Um, and again, from all the work that we've done, we are a cybercrime harm prevention team, we do work in prevention, um, and that is the best way forward when it comes to situation, purely because of the MO that we see, and we see the reports that are coming through, uh, to us are mostly um, caused or, or, or the perpetrators are, um, are outside of the UK. And probably the biggest thing for us and, and something that I'm very passionate about is the victim-led approach as paramount. Sextortion is a crime that is 
very much um, hits you deeply. It is something very personal, something very intimate. It's a, where you lose control of your body, essentially, because it is very intimate images, very intimate videos that are that you're being blackmailed with. Um, so the way it, influ it impacts a victim, we need to have that in mind when we go out to these uh, victims and we speak to them and we provide advice. We have to be non-judgmental, we have to be very sensitive, and we need to make sure that we we, we provide them with the information that at least a little bit gives them control back. Because I think it's the losing the control that impacts um, them the most. And speaking of the impact and how victims um, feel uh, about um, sextortion and, and what it does to them, th this is just a, 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 an anonymous quote from someone who felt uh, a victim of sextortion. Um, I'll let you read it uh, for uh, a few seconds. And again, it goes back to uh, what we've seen, the video um, that we've showed you. Very, very difficult to recognise what's real and what's not on social media. People can create fake accounts within minutes. We could do that right now. I can make myself look like a, um, you know, a 14 year old girl. Uh, I could create an account with loads of pictures. Uh, Snap score is something that Snapchat uses to, to kind of let others know that you've you've, you've kind of you know you've been checked out and, and, and your pictures are real and, and your face is, 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 is appearing constantly on the, uh, on the pictures so you know it, it can be a fake account. But there you go. That's how good cyber criminals are becoming um, at it. And even a person who's very wary of things and, and, and is quite savvy when it comes to using social media have felt a uh, fell victim of extortion. So prevention is key, raising awareness is key, just to make sure that we get through to our demographic as per the stats um, about, um, about victims. So what type of uh, impact we see um, when we deal with extortion, financial obviously, because it is, um, this is basically a money making business and, and, and that's something to, to, to remember. Again, just like in the video, that video was created by National Crime Agency a few years ago, but it's still very, very relevant how, how they operate. It is a money-making uh, business for them. Uh, financially, huge amounts of money that victims pay, they, they adhere to the demands, um, and they try to use their bank accounts. Uh, there's a lot of requests that we see that um, are coming in from cyber criminals for uh, gift vouchers, um, especially when they when, when, when the victim is a bit younger as well, or, or a student, or, or someone who's under, under 18. Relationship breakdown, that is huge for the victims as well. Very often they're already in relationships, or they're just seeing someone, they're married. Uh, but as Rose mentioned, the culture of using social media and the way we, um, we kind of function in an online world now, it's absolutely acceptable to you know, strike up a flirtatious conversation with someone who um, who befriends you on social media. And that is something that young people do. We do a lot of work um, around schools, and um, this is obviously um, the angle for today's presentation is for adult support um, and um, assistance for them, but there is a lot of young people who fall victims of extortion as well. And we, we see more and more from the work that we do as a cyber crime harm prevention team that um, it is changing in the way young people live their lives online and offline is pretty much the same and it's it just it's in their interchanges for them. So uh, even creating relationships, it happens online. That's how they function. And it's not something uh, out of ordinary, but it's just what, uh, what happens. So as they become older and become, become people in their 20s, that risk carries on. Uh, and this is why we need to make sure that we, we raise their awareness of it. Mental health, another one, is huge. Uh, victims feel distressed, they feel depressed, anxious, um, self-harm, it leads to self-harm as well because it is something that uh, they feel ashamed of um, and if those images and those videos are being shared um, to their families and friends and employers, colleagues, whoever they've got on their list of friends as you saw on the video it being, it's being downloaded, then the cyber criminals uh, create 
group chats or WhatsApp using those um, contacts um, <coughs> and they just start sending uh, collages of images and, and videos of, of the victim. So even, even when you put yourself in the victim's shoes, it sounds horrendous that the most intimate thing, <coughs> something that belongs to you, is being shared across uh, with with your loved ones, really, essentially, and very often with uh, with your partners, with your with your husbands and uh, with your wives, and that's why it leads to relationship breakdown as well. Uh, outing LGBT plus people, um, yeah, fear of being outed. Um, it could be that um, uh, the victims have not done that yet and then all of a sudden there's their image and video being shared to their families and friends um, and that is not the right way to do it and, and it just causes them huge distress, anxiety and depression. And there's another one, cultural religious, and that we see as well, fear of repercussions on the basis of um, your cultural background um, and your beliefs as well. So. That's just um, a small selection of how um, um, victims can be impacted. Um, and this is why it's so important when we do um, to go out and speak to them, we're very sensitive. So that takes me on to what type of messaging or um, how our uh, awareness raising looks like um, and what type of messaging we want to put out there um, as, uh, as Police Scotland. So what should you do? Uh, you should stop the chat. Uh, take screenshots and of the text and the profile. Um, block the account and report it to the platform, whichever platform you're using, whether Instagram or Snapchat, uh, sometimes Facebook as well. Always, always report it to the police and get support. And then underneath that is things that you shouldn't do, which are basically mirroring uh, mirror what, what we see up there. On the left hand side, you see um, an example of, um, of a poster that was developed by our corporate communications team. As a result of all the work that we've done, we've obviously been working with them as well. Um, this is something that we want to put out there to, to victims, make sure that they don't panic, that they pause, they don't pay, and they do report it to the police. It's important for us to know um, how many, um, how many um, extortions are happening across Scotland. We want to paint even more detailed picture of it, because without it, it's difficult for us to then know how to tackle it and what kind of preventative messaging we need to put out there. It's important to also carry the demographic that we talked about. Um, so our uh, corporate communications team will also be doing more work around that and, and trying to, to reach uh, young men who use social media like Snapchat and Instagram as well. But this is, I think this is a, a start of the journey for us. This is us understanding what social is. This is us doing events like this today. Um, to come out and raise your awareness as practitioners who deal with adults out there who may be quite vulnerable and who, who may fall victims of that so that you also know what it is, how it happens and what to do when it does happen. And in terms of that uh, help and support that I've mentioned throughout, um, obviously Police Scotland, um, reporting the incident to Police Scotland is very important, um, but there's also um, other organisations that provide a bit more information and support and help as well. Uh, Revenge Porn Helpline, as Rose mentioned, one of the, um, uh, one of the forms of extortion um, is uh, where people, adults, know the perpetrator and Revenge Porn Helpline can help them um, you know, take down, um, report the, the, the incident and um, have their intimate image and video dealt with as well and it is confidential support as well. National Cyber Security Centre has got a huge um, website where there's a lot of guidance and assistance in protecting yourself from this extortion phishing emails that was just talking about. Uh, Police Scotland has got a website, a extortion website as well, dedicated to extortion, where all the information that we've provided you here today, uh, you'll find it there as well, and uh, some more guidance and support uh, mechanisms. But um, reporting to Police Scotland is, is essential. Um, we've got police officers who know exactly how to deal with these incidents, and they will provide victims with all the information, and we'll put that control back in their hands. <coughs> And this is something that we try to reiterate and, and, and try to kind of raise awareness of that, you know, it's just a mistake. It's, it is a mistake that, you know, causes you a lot of distress. 
but we've all been there and there is help that you can get. We are trying to uh, let people know that they shouldn't just struggle with it themselves, that they should speak to someone and, and Police Scotland is, is one of those organisations you can come to, uh, report it uh, and find help and seek help and speak to their loved ones and not try um, and deal with it themselves.